Hey guys, so before I start this heat series, I want to take a little poll in the comments section below. Here's a poll. Do you use heat in your hair? If so, how and how often? If you've never used heat or stopped using heat, why? There's no denying that this hair type is really unique and that the Western hair industry, for the most part, only cater to other hair types for a long, long time. So in the grand scheme of things, we still have so much more to learn. And to make things even more complicated, there's so much diversity within the natural hair community. So that saying, one size fits all, really does not apply to us. But when someone with a big platform who's really just trying to help says that a heatless hair regimen is the way to go to get long, healthy, natural hair, it's easy for us to jump on that and stop exploring the use of heat for ourselves. That's unfortunate because there are many beneficial ways to use heat on natural hair. And for some of you watching, the use of heat could be that missing piece to help you achieve your goals. So in this heat series, I'm going to show you some details to look for when shopping for a blow dryer. Go over some myths on heat protectants give you a different perspective on heat by showing you how I use it on my hair. I'm also going to show you how I keep my hair clean and stretched through rain, sleet, snow, and sweat for a whole month, and how I keep my ends so full and healthy. Let's start with blow dryers. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be a lot more confident with the decision of what kind of blow dryer is best for you. The basic blow dryer is very simple. It has a motorized fan in the back that sucks air into the blow dryer through the metal heating coils and out the front as hot air. So you're basically just blowing hot air on your hair. Nothing fancy, very simple. An ionic blow dryer also has a fan in the back that sucks air in through hot coils and out the front. The difference is that an ionic blow dryer has an additional material in it like ceramic, porcelain, titanium, tourmaline, or even pearls that's activated when heated and shoots out negative ions on your hair. Which is great because unlike basic blow dryers, Rather than just spitting out hot air, which basically heats up your hair layer by layer until it's dry, causing a lot of damage to your outer cuticles, the negative ionic charged heat produced by ionic blow dryers dries your hair a lot faster. It does this in two ways. First, certain types of ionic blow dryers emit deep penetrating infrared heat that has long penetrating waves that direct the strongest part of this heat to the inner layers of your hair first, basically drying your hair from the inside out. The negative ions produced by ionic blow dryers also breaks up groups of water molecules so the hot air can evaporate them faster. With the inner layers of your hair dried first and water being evaporated quicker, it takes a shorter time to blow dry your hair and your cuticle layers get to avoid excessive drying and damage. Another great benefit of ionic blow dryers, especially for natural hair, is that even though our hair naturally gives off a negative and positive charge, due to over manipulating and plain old damage, negative ions are constantly being stripped from our hair, causing it to become frizzy, wiry, and hard to manage. So the negative ions coming out of the blow dryer helps to replenish the negative charge of your hair resulting in smoother, more relaxed and flexible cuticle layers. Here's a close-up of a hair strand after using a basic blow dryer, compared to a hair strand after using an ionic blow dryer. As you can see, it's obvious that the basic blow dryer caused more damage, seen here as visible chipped off and lifted cuticle layers. What I really want you to pay attention to is that both blow dryers cause some level of damage. So even though the ionic blow dryer provides additional benefits, it's still very important not to overuse it and to be cautious and present when using it.
Not all ionic blow dryers are created equally. Some add ion producing materials as an attachment to the inside of the front nozzle. Some infuse it into the inner tube of the blow dryer and some even coat the heated coils with it. These are all great options and if used correctly can benefit the overall health and appearance of your hair. But if I had to pick one over the others, I would pick a blow dryer that has the ionic material on or as the heating coil. Here's why. The heating coil in a basic blow dryer is made of metal. The problem with metal is that it doesn't hold heat evenly, so it heats up your hair unevenly, which creates hot spots that inflicts excessive damage to isolated sections of your hair. That's what you don't want. When shopping for a blow dryer, look for one that either has ceramic coated heating coils, preferably infused with tourmaline, or a blow dryer with titanium heating coils. Overall, these two options are really good, but they have their differences. A ceramic coat infused with tourmaline distributes heat evenly and releases negative ions. The main difference is that ceramic has a unique ability to lower its temperature in response to the surrounding temperature, which is an added benefit to avoid heat damage. Blow dryers with a titanium heating coil also heats evenly and releases the most negative ions. The main difference is that it gets really hot really fast. So if you're not fully paying attention, it's easier to overdo it and experience heat damage. But it will make your hair smoother, shinier, and less staticky. Blow dryers with titanium heating coils were originally created with professional hairstylists in mind because its lighter weight makes it easier for stylists to hold it all day and its consistent high temperature shortens the drying time for each client. Titanium blow dryers are powerful, so it's important to be fully present and not to overdo things when you're using it to stretch your natural hair. Hey, I'm back. As you're gonna see in the next few videos, it takes a completely different mentality to use blow dryers to stretch natural hair. Your goals and technique are way different and a little more complicated. And you have to be a lot more conscious throughout the process and always remind yourself until it becomes habit that you're just stretching your hair and not straightening it. As a reminder, you don't have to stretch your hair for it to be healthy. That's what's so wonderful or unique about our hair. It's limitless, it can do anything. So it's a good idea to step outside the box and try different things. My hope from this heat series is that you overcome any fears associated with this simple tool, enough to analyze it and use it to your benefit. I know a lot of you are gonna be asking me to tell you which blow dryer to get. I'm purposely not gonna do that because it's best for you to use your newfound knowledge to explore and find a blow dryer that's best suited for you. Now that you got all the details, Here's an easy to digest overview of blow dryer options. The basic blow dryer will do the job of drying your hair and is the cheapest option, but it can potentially inflict the most damage. A blow dryer with a heating coil that's coated in ceramic and infused with tourmaline is the safest option because it produces a more controlled heat temperature. And a blow dryer with a titanium coil produces the most amount of beneficial negative ions and dries your hair quicker for best results. But it gets really hot really quick, so you have to pay more attention to it and really know what you're doing. In the next video, I'll talk about what I consider are the must-haves with blow dryers. There are some features that I personally believe a blow dryer has to have to work efficiently. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.